Sometimes people see images on the internet and they often wonder how the photographer got their image to the final point. I've been asked to do a tutorial on how I got this image from the starting image here on the left to the finished result on the right. So I'm going to take you through the stages of what was required to put this image together. I started by taking the original image into Digital Photo Professional which is a RAW converter for Canon cameras. I then made nine exposures, all at different increments, to have the lightest and the darkest all the way through the nine images. As you can see the nine images in front of me. I then took it into a program called Photo Matrix which works with HDR and it takes the best from each of the nine exposures and puts them together to create one image. So you can see on the left of my screen, that is the original before I started working with HDR on this image. On the right of the screen, you can see the resulting image from HDR, and you can see all the detail that was originally hidden within the shadows. You can see there's a lot more depth and detail within the clouds. From here, I start working the image into different steps to get it to the final result. Once I've got my HDR image from the nine exposures together, I take it into Photoshop and I start my standard editing. I don't do any individual editing on any of the exposures until they're all formed into one. Otherwise it can throw out the lining up of details and so on. So once I'm in Photoshop, I do my first layer which is a standard shadow highlight. And you can see the difference just in that. It's brought more out in the clouds. I then added a curves layer as well as levels. On my shadow highlight layer, I also do any spot editing, like sensor spot removal, any small distracting elements that I may wish to clone out. From there, I then perform a series of layers that include different blend modes, uh, Gaussian blues, and so on, until it becomes to that more velvety feel. Once I've done that, I then added a Gaussian blue layer, but I put it on screen and drop the opacity down to 26%. And as you can see, it's brought a little bit more out of the shadows again. You could have got a mask on there that you can then start masking out the areas where it may be a little bit too light. I then merged all the layers into one and did a series of dodge and burns across the image, always at increments of 5%. Do it subtle, and it's not so obvious, it's a little bit more realistic for the image. On top of that, I then do a series of adjustment layers. In this case, selective color to bring a little bit more out and a hue saturation layer over the area that was a little bit too pale in comparison to before. From there, I add a few color fills. Now, I like using the brown tones and in this case, hue works really well. It doesn't colorize the entire image. It still leaves some color like in the greens of the leaves but it adds a bit of a brown hue across the whole image. I then duplicated that layer and put it onto soft light and that gives it a bit more intensity. I then played around with levels on specific areas, in this case on the foreground grass. Then I took the entire image and worked with it in duotones until I got an image. I'll put this back onto normal so you can see what it was. As you can see it's quite dark in the tones. It's still got some brown in it but I masked it out and turned it to multiply and dropped it down to about the 46% mark. And you've got a little bit more depth within the image. Masked out a little bit more of the areas I didn't want that to affect. I then used an action which many may be familiar with called the Dragonizer and put a copy of that over the top and masked out the areas I didn't want and changed the blend mode to darker color. From there I used a series of unsharp masks, different steps within the masking that'll bring out a little bit more crispness within the image and highlight certain details and again masked out the areas where I found it was just too sharp. From there I duplicated all the layers into one again and applied some dodge and burn and that just concentrates on different little areas that needed a little bit more help. Again, I put all the new layers into another layer and gave it a Gaussian blur on screen mode but just at a very low opacity, just make it subtle and also hide a little bit more of the noise areas that may have been enhanced by some of your previous layers. Once the image has been finished to what you want, 
I then resized it down to the appropriate size I needed for that particular image, used a smart sharpen and that's all. Hope you understood that and hopefully it gives you a few tips for your own images. Thank you.